Somewhere beyond the sea, somewhere waiting for me. My lover stands on golden sands and watches the ships that go sailing. Welcome to PPI Recording Studio nestled in the cradle of a New York City. Welcome to the fifth weekly episode for the month of January 2023 for dedication post-isolation YouTube series because we're getting it out to the nation and beyond. First photo you're going to see come up today is a thank you to all our YouTube channel subscribers. And in the last four days, we've had a few new folks jump on board and our new subscribers, which is absolutely fantastico. And one is Kellyanne. So welcome, Kellyanne, and thank you for subscribing. To join Kellyanne and subscribe, it's very easy, quick, simple. As you're watching today's episode, lower right-hand corner of your screen, you see a red button. You click onto that red button, please. That's it. You're subscribed. What happens is it supports this particular series on the YouTube pla platform, excuse me, and as well, it notifies you directly when I add a new episode such as this one for this week. Hence, you never miss an episode. They're always interesting. They're always intriguing. Certainly very fun and got some hip music on it. So next photo you're going to see come up today, and I have a follow-up for the next couple of photos you're going to see for previous episodes for January 2023. First is NYC Go. Now, NYC Go is a website that has discounts, and then you see the photo as I'm talking, for hotels, restaurants, and events here in New York City. And it's legit. So in the text description area underneath today's episode, I will have a live link to their website, and also their Facebook page makes it very easy for you watching to go down, click on it, and get access to not only their website and Facebook page, but those discounts. And that goes until now, I believe, February 12th, according to the particular photo that you're seeing here today. Next photo you're going to see come up today, and that is for Art Show Bedford. Now, we talked about this last week for January 24th, 2023 episode, and this weekend coming up, is the last weekend that we'll be having the art show in Bedford, New York. So it's for February 3rd, 4th, and 5th, 2023. The time is 11 in the morning to 5 in the afternoon. I will have live links in the text description area underneath today's episode to their website and also their Facebook page. Makes it very easy for you viewing to get access to Art Show Bedford. And I got a lovely email Saturday past from the co-chair, Tara, and she was very, very thankful for the promotion support we're offering here. And we're glad to do it anytime, Tara, for any kind of event or art show you have. Glad to help. Next one you're going to see come up today and is for Aggressor Adventures that we talked about last week on January 24th, 2023 episode. And you're going to see a map come up. And that is has little red dots on it. Looks actually little red dye flags. And that shows all the different liveaboards that they have around the globe. They have many. And I will have live links, as I did last week, in the text description area to Aggressor website, which is aggressor.com, also their Facebook page, which is Aggressor Adventures, and also their YouTube channel, which now segues me to the next photo you're going to see come up. And that is on their YouTube channel I described last week. Please go on and visit because it's very, very interesting they not only talk about their boats and where they are and all that kind of thing and other aspects of their adventure, but also they have podcasts such as the photo you see come up here. So it's very informative, very, very interesting. And if you subscribe to the channel, it helps them as well. And you could pass the information on to family or friends for what they're doing and what they offer for eco tourism. The next one you're going to see come up today is January 17, 2023. Two weeks ago, we had a guest artist here, and that was Michael Roberts. And Michael is a composer, playwright, and music director. And Michael is going to be performing February 14, 2023 at 7 p.m. right here in New York City. And that is at Pangea, and it's at 7 p.m. And I will have live links in the text description area underneath today, this episode, for Pangea website and also their Facebook page. Again, make it very easy for you viewing to click on and get information and buy tickets. And that is for Craig Pomerantz's show for Valentine's Day, February 14, 2023. And last but not least, 
Uh, it's a thank you to John Muro, owner of Absolutely Phenomenal Video in Norwalk, Connecticut. Thank you, John, for your support because John digitized many of the photos that you see here that we're going to use today for underwater photography episode number four right here in dedication post isolation. So thank you, John, for your support. And I will have a live link in the text er description area, excuse me, for absolutelyphenomenalvideo.com and that's in Norwalk, Connecticut and he offers all kinds of digitation services. So Project 142 Concert Series is the sponsor to Dedication Post Isolation YouTube Series. Our website is www.project142.org Facebook page is Project 142NYC and the event calendar on the website is www project142.org slash calendar. Now that calendar gets updated every day by myself. It's not only kept current, but I add new information on online events. For example, live events like Craig and Michael that I talked about a little bit ago at Pangea right here in New York City. Also, we support promotionally nonprofit organizations such as Mother Rachel Orphanage Center in Uganda, Gotham Whale right here in New York City, International Women in Jazz, Certainly Red Cross we've been promoting for the last two years on the website and through Dedication Post Isolation YouTube series and also small business marketing like Absolutely Phenomenal Video, for example, business marketing for Aggressor Adventures, for example. So it's all right here on the website. So this is going to take us up to today. So today, like a featured artist, for example, like Michael that we had on Michael Roberts, we're going to do a featured animal today instead of adding in like four different vibe critters. So today we're going to talk about Spanish dancer Nudibrank. Now you're going to see a flyer come up and I spelt out the name of Nudibrank because it's not one that's common for a lot of people. So I want to make sure you see how it's actually spelled. It's Nudibrank and it sounds like bank only with an R. So it's Nudibrank. That's how you pronounce it. So Nudibranks are an animal. They are, for lack of better description, a shellless snail. Now, when they're born, they have a shell and they lose it in the larval stage and then end up looking similar to this. And there are approximately 3,000 species of nudibranchs around the world, from pole to pole and around the world. They encompass every saltwater ocean that you can imagine around the globe. And typically, they're about an inch, maybe two inches big. They don't get very big at all. And their lifespan is typically a handful of weeks to maybe a year. They don't live very long. And this particular nudibranch that we're going to talk about today is called the Spanish Dancer nudibranch, which is actually one of the largest in the family. Now, nudibranchs, for those who are into sex, are hermaphroditic, meaning they have both male and female organs. They typically do not inseminate themselves, but it gives them a leg up, so to speak, haha, when they're out and they come across another Spanish Dancer nudibranch. So it's like, you know, what do you want to be? What do you want to be? And then kind of meet in the middle, and there they go. So they're hermaphroditic, and when they lay eggs, it's a coiled ribbon of eggs. It's very interesting and beautiful when you see that. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about how and why predators don't mess with them. So nudibranchs as well are carnivores, and they typically remain on the seafloor and crawl around looking for food. That's pretty much what they do, and then lay eggs to proliferate the species, right? So they have, um, we're going to go to this particular photo now, they have underneath their mouth, underneath the bottom side, they have what's known as a radula, which looks like a cheese grater. And it's all these sharp little teeth, and what they do is they crawl around, they find something that they want, and they gnaw on it. And they grate it like a piece of cheese, so to speak, and that's how they eat it, live obviously, like sushi, for example. And But what you're seeing here with the Spanish dancer nudibranch with the photo is these two what look like antenna are actually called rhino like rhinoceros rhinophores and these rhinophores are chemical sensors in the water it's like a nose they're chemical sensors in the water so when they're crawling around on the bottom and they sense something chemically which is how they figure it out through those two rhinophores then they hone in on it and then they can go and eat it now because they are carnivores meaning they typically eat sponges, they'll eat, uh, certain species will eat jellyfish, certain species will eat each other if they get hungry enough, unfortunately. And, but with the specifics of 
the Spanish dancer Nudibranch, they eat mostly sponges. And interesting what they do is they take the sponge and it becomes a toxin in their body and they utilize that to their defense. So hence, when they come across a predator, a predator won't mess with them because now they have that toxin in their system. It's not toxic to them, but it's toxic to predators, so the predators will stay away from them. Now, the Spanish dancer nudibranch is one of the largest in the species. The biggest I've seen diving is about the size of a football, maybe a little bigger, and I've seen it actually swimming in the water, and hence that's why they're called the Spanish dancer, because they're one of the few species of nudibranch that actually swim in the water. When they elevate themselves off the sea bottom, they actually go in an undulating wave motion and they can swim all the way to the surface. It's really, really beautiful to watch. It's like an underwater ballet. It's very, very beautiful. But that's what makes them unique and hence that's part of the reason why, main reason why they got their name. So we're gonna to segue to the next photo of a Spanish dancer nudibranch and now you're gonna see the whole body. So you see the head to the left with the rhinophores, but on the other end, which you don't see in this particular close-up, is you see that feathery plumage. And that's actually its gills, because nudibranch is Latin, and it actually means bare gills. So their gills are exposed most of the time, and they use that to respirate in the water. They get oxygen through the water for their body. So hence, that's why you see that feathery plumage right near their butt. So that's the Spanish dancer nudibranch. Um, they're really, really, really gorgeous. They, to see them crawling around the bottom and swimming in the water, as with most nudibranchs. Now, should fill in that most nudibranchs, they span, with the 3,000 species, they span the color spectrum. They go from yellows to reds to blues. They're iridescent in many, many species of nudibranchs. And because they have this capability of taking toxins from another animal, example, for example, they ingest them and now use it for defense. Most predators don't mess with them, even though they're brightly colored, and even though they could be, be very small. They don't mess with them. Fish, a lot of fish don't eat them. Crustaceans don't eat them because of that. So that's the Spanish dancer nudibranch. Now, next time, we're going to do one a month. We're going to feature a particular sea creature animal. So next time, we're going to talk about feather dust or, or uh, Christmas tree tube worms. I introduced you to Christmas tree tube worms last year when we did one of our underwater episodes, and absolutely underwater episode number two, and that was September 14th, 2022, and that was like this critter and this critter were taken off the Hawaiian Islands when I was on the Kona Aggressor, for, for, uh, for example. So we're gonna talk about Christmas tree two worms next time, and I'm gonna do one particular creature once a month. So we're gonna take it out today because we opened up with a song that Bobby Darren made famous, right? somewhere right beyond the sea so we're going to take it out with a song that he actually composed it's an original composition by bobby darren called as long as i'm singing and i recorded it on my fourth cd we did an arrangement of it. as long as i'm singing there's a bell up in my brain that's ringing making a crazy ding dong and if chip don't desert me, then there's nothing in the world can hurt me. Long as I'm singing my song, give me trumpets, legato, put some saxes with them, strings, pizzicato, add some rhythm. As long as I'm singing, and the world's all right, and everything's swinging, long as I'm singing my song. Making music is more to me than a pleasure, cause me and music, we go together like notes in a measure, as long as I'm singing, and the world's all right, and everything's swinging, long as I'm singing my, long as I'm singing my, long as I'm singing my. Song. We'll see you next episode. Next week is going to be music guest and artist Alex Fredericks, jazz vocalist and pianist. And we're going to do our Valentine's Day episode for 2023. So you don't want to miss it. Subscribe to the channel. And thank you, Mr. Chip for Breezy. Hey, did you bring a horn? I did. Good. Hey. We'll see you next episode.